Hello everyone, it's Susan Fox Bowen with Song Sparrow Paper Crafts. Welcome! For those of you who are new, I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and I'm here just sharing my love of stamping and paper crafts with all of you. Today we are starting a brand new video series called Terrific Tuesdays. So each Tuesday I will be launching a new video where I share uh, a new project with some products that I just happened to fall in love with this week. So uh, welcome and let's get started. So what are Terrific Tuesdays all about? Each Tuesday, we're going to be walking through three projects together. If you're interested in making these projects at home yourself and you would like a copy of the PDF tutorial and the kit to put together the three projects, simply place an order in my online store, a minimum of $40 before tax and shipping, and use the host code that I've put below and in the comments, and I will send you a copy of the tutorial and the kit to put together this week's projects. With the holidays quickly approaching, I thought it was a perfect time to think about holiday gift giving, and in particular, gift cards. Sometimes it can be hard to come up with a good way, a creative way, a personal way to give a gift card uh, to our friends and family and loved ones. So as a part of our team event this month, we were challenged to make a gift card holder. And I ran across this super cool and very easy one panel accordion fold gift card design. Uh, this is the card that I made for our team challenge. I needed a gift card for my nephew whose birthday is this month. So <clears throat> my uh, card is based on his likes and interests, which is fishing and hunting and the great outdoors. Uh, and I thought, Let's adapt that to our holiday products and see what we can do as far as getting you ready to give those gift cards this Christmas. Our projects today are going to be focusing on the Trucking Along Bundle, which includes a photopolymer stamp set and a punch. And these can be found in the online exclusive section of my website. So let's take a quick look at the three projects that we will be making together today. They range from basic to advanced is what I like to call them. So we start with our basic here. Our second Design is a bit more advanced and incorporates the punch. And our third and final design will involve some designer series paper, which I will talk about whenever we get to that design. So how about we get started? If you order this week's kit, what you will receive for this first card design will be the red cardstock for the base as well as the gift card fold out panel and the gift card pocket and you will also receive um, the white cardstock for the front panel and the message panel on the inside so let's get started making our card um, in the kit the colors of red may vary it might be Cherry Cobbler, it might be real red. Right now, Cherry Cobbler is sold out in the store. Um, it is the, the annual sale has concluded and everyone stocked up on Cherry Cobbler, I guess. Um, but real red works very well and I have used on several. So, <clears throat> So the color of your cardstock might vary in your kit, the color of red. We're just gonna stamp a repeating pattern of the truck outline here as we go up our cardstock. And I will 
vary a little bit the start and stop of you know where the what part of the truck is exposed here to give us some variety in our paper pattern that we're making And you can do the same, decide how, how you want your pattern to appear. It doesn't have to be too terribly fussy. Um, it's just kind of all about what you want it to look like. But we do want a little bit of variety in where the truck ends up, just for some visual interest here. So finish up our last row of trucks here. And then we will move on to our gift card pocket where we are going to repeat the same idea in the pattern making here. So now I started for my gift pocket panel since it'll be a bit more... Um, Looked upon more centrally, I guess, by the recipient. I started by um, stamping an image in the center and then I worked from there. Um, only because I, I wanted there to be a prominent image of the truck along the way there. But you might choose to do it a little differently and that is fine. That's what makes our card designs unique and interesting. To ourselves and our recipients. I only need the front part for this one, so I'll just ink up the front like that. Okay. Before I move away from this gift card pocket, I'm going to go ahead and take care of making the notch in the top. Now, for the notch, I used the Heartfelt Hexagon Punch, which is found in the uh, online exclusives section of my store. Honestly, you could use just about anything. I mean, you could cut a shape, you could use a circle. You could use another shape um, punch that you might have on hand. And then I went approximately three quarters of an inch down from the top to give us our little notch in the top so we'll be able to very easily see and remove our gift card. All right, so we're gonna set that aside and next we are going to work on our image panel for the front of our pocket here. So we begin again with the truck. Um, I want the truck to be, oh, approximately about three quarters of an inch or so up my, uh, white cardstock here because that's going to leave us space for our sentiment to be centered and not falling off the page I guess you could say. So I started with the the outline of the truck and then I'm going to come back and fill it in with the coordinating stamp that um, fills in the truck color. Now I like to get my stamp really, really, really inky so that it is a more, um, I don't know how you, more concentrated color. Uh, if you want it to look more vintage or rustic, then you don't have to spend quite as much time, um, filling in the stamp. Uh, You'll also learn that there's a little 
trick to the stamp to get it in the right place. And it's all about the little white marks. And I don't know if you can see those as I stamp or not. Let me show you on the stamped image here. You notice how there are some white shadowing at the top of the bumper. Uh, and I like to put that right towards the top of the outline and that helps you get it lined up. I'm a smidge off um, this time, but that that's your lineup point on the, on that uh, fill-in image stamp. Next, we're going to give our tires a little bit of color and they have a stamp for that as well. Again, I like to get it really inky. I used basic gray, you could use black. Um, and fill in our tire and hubcap image there. Now I'm going to make it look realistic, like our truck is sitting on the ground. Do that with a little crumb cake on the stamp that is a bunch of lines here. And to give a, so I centered it first under the truck. And then I'm gonna stamp off a little bit of color. I'm gonna come right above that. Ooh. I am so sorry we have a new kitten and he apparently would like to come and play today. If you will stand by one moment. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's our new kitten. His name is Nolan. He is approximately three months old. He is a huge bundle of energy and curiosity and he gets into all kinds of things including my stamps. A lot of times I have to hold him while I'm doing stamping things because he wants some attention. Uh, and I was ignoring him because obviously I'm making this video and he was not having it. So he just hopped right up here to see what was going on. So I've stamped off the ground here and you noticed that I was getting my stamp inky and then kind of stamping off to the side to give a little bit of variation in the color to make it look a bit more realistic. And I'm going to do the same thing uh, as I stamp the um, clouds here in a little while. So, but we're going to move on to the tree image, which we're going to put in the back of the truck. And this is another two-step stamping. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but I like the dimension and realism that it gives to the tree to first stamp our outline. Of our tree, which I did in Pretty Peacock. Um, so that whenever we come back with shaded spruce, you're still going to be able to see the outline here. I'll show you. There we go. You see how you get some visible outline and, and real, realistic dimension on that. Now we're going to move to our clouds, and I mentioned just a moment ago that we're gonna do that stamp off technique. So I like the first one to be pretty dark. And then I just come do that second image right after that. And the second image might be a little difficult to see, and to me that's fine. Um, I'm just kind of going for the idea that I've got two and one is a little more forward in the picture than the other. And you'll notice that I did this in an odd number. Uh, the great wizards of the design Oz <laughs> seem to say that odd numbers of elements are pleasing and appealing to the eye. And I do find myself, you know, taking a step back and looking at it and going, you know, there is something to that. So three groups of clouds here. 
and we are going to finish off <clears throat> by stamping our sentiment in the center here in black and I put it to where it was a smidge in the clouds bit centered above the truck just like that so now let's get to assembling all of our pieces here So you will cut your gift card panel down and it is a Z fold. That's going to fold out towards your left. I'm going to adhere I need to cut that down a smidge. I thought I had done that already. Pardon me one moment. I thought that I had cut that down already, but I had not. So just going to apply some adhesive to the back here. Adhere our image to the front. Try to get the the edges where our mat is equal. Going to apply adhesive to the back of this of the gift card panel as well. I am going to use tear and tape on the back because I want it to be a really good strong bond. Ooh, as we can tell there. A really good strong bond with the back here <clears throat> knowing that this is going to see some use with the in and out of the gift card from the pocket you only want to adhere on three sides obviously to allow the top to be open so slide the gift card in going to leave approximately the same um, border on all three sides. Gives us our pocket here. And then going to apply adhesive to the back of our small piece of white cardstock here for our message panel to the recipient. Place it on our far right panel. I'm also going to apply tear and tape to the to adhere our gift card uh, accordion fold to our card back. Again, I want it to have a really strong bond, and I think this has a bit stronger hold than our um, adhesive runner. Oh, corner got the card stock there. Got a little carried away before I got that edge. So, give them a good rub, take the backing off. Now we will adhere this to our base. Make sure we put it on here the right way, not upside down. Leave approximately the same border all the way around. Just give it a good rub like that if you're not sure if it's adhered on there. That and there we are. We now have our first design all done. How about that? 100% stamping. Very straightforward. All right, let's see our second one. So if you get the kit, what you will receive is the cardstock for the base, the accordion and pocket, as well as the image panels, and also 
a, a piece where you are going to be able to punch out the truck. Now this design, as I maybe mentioned, and let me zoom in on it a little bit here, uses the Mary Melody 3D embossing folder, which is in the annual catalog. Those pieces will come to you already embossed. Um, so they'll be ready for you to cut out and put on um, the card for you, which includes the base as well as the pocket. So we will get started by making our truck here. So this design incorporates the punch and we will need to stamp our truck. I try to get it close to the edge so that it'll be a little bit easier to punch out. Again, I'm really saturating the filler stamp in order to give a really good, that's a much better stamp this time, uh, to give nice saturated color to the vehicle. And you'll see what I was talking about now. It's a little better in this stamp because I got it lined up better where these um, accents on the stamp are, are very clearly visible whenever you're getting ready to mash the filler into the outline. And they're essential, I think, in, in really helping you get it lined up. And once I figured that out, it was such an aha moment for me. Oh, before I punch that out, let me do the tires here. I don't like to have to do it later. It's a little easier when you have more paper to work with. I don't know why. I think it's a visual thing for me, honestly. Get it all lined up. Get my tires filled in. Oh, okay. Let's set this aside for a moment. Now I'm going to punch out my truck here. Using our punch. Now you could fussy cut this, but it is so much simpler to simply punch it out. You will not need the additional pieces um, that punched out at the same time, not for this particular design. So you can, um, you can set those away. You will not need them. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is make our tree here. Um, this is also gonna be on our little scrap I want to do it close to an edge because I, I am going to adhere it to the truck here in a moment. Um, so you wanna leave a bit of a gap at the bottom. I would say about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do this over here. About an eighth of an inch or so. Um, just enough where it's gonna grab some tear and tape to adhere it to the back of the truck. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before stamp the outline, stamp the filler. There is not a punch for this, so we'll do just a little bit of fussy cutting of our tree here with our scissors. So obviously I wanna leave a little bit on the bottom. I'm leaving that eighth of an inch where it's gonna grab my tape to adhere it to the back of the truck. So cut this out. I like to try to get some definition on the branches. Um, you could be a bit less precise if you weren't into that much detail on yours. But it doesn't take but just a second to get this cut out here. And I'm gonna leave that on the bottom. So now we have a tree and we have our truck. So I'm gonna flip the truck over. I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape 
right underneath the edge of the bed of the truck. I'm gonna remove the backing. Now I leave, I do it this way where I leave the truck, the tree down so that I can come rest the truck on top. Kind of pick it up a little bit and then I bring those little edges around to the front, see? So it looks like it's kind of hanging off the front of the truck. All right, so that's step number one in our process here. And now we will be building the rest of the scene on our front panel. So we will begin by making our ground here on the bottom. I'm going to kind of eyeball, I'd like the truck about right there-ish. So I will start Start that there. I don't want quite that much ink. Do a light little stamp off to the side. I think I'll have that one be a little dark. I just won't press super hard. Now I've got my ground going there. I'm gonna go ahead and place my truck. I will put some dimensionals on the back. Take off the backing and place it right about there. Looks good. Now I will stamp my clouds. I'm going to do just like I did in the first design here, kind of do groups of two with a inky and then not a re-inking. And then my last one up here at the top. Like that. And I'm going to finish it off with my sentiment. In the center here. like so. Now we will assemble our card here. Go ahead and get my folds in order. And sometimes I, if I didn't quite get my scoring just right, I might, you know, swap it around a little bit to figure out what panel I want to be on the front. I'm going to do that. I'm going to run some adhesive on the back. With our runner here. Put it on the front panel of our accordion. <clears throat> I'm going to cut our little notch in our gift card pocket. Put a little tear and tape on the back. Oh, that piece got stuck to me. I don't need to be stuck to this accordion. Thank you. Yeah. Remove the backing. border there now we've got our gift card pocket I do like to press around those edges really good to be sure that that pocket is adhered really well put 
some adhesive on the back of our message panel and get it down on here. Tear and tape on the back of our accordion for a nice strong hold on our back here. That one did not want to tear. It tears very easily, hence the name tear and tape makes it simple and it's stronger than the adhesive runner. So when you know that you've got a portion of the card that's going to see a lot of, well, I hate to say a lot of action, but you know, that is going to have a lot of movement. You know, it's a moving piece. Um, or holding down a moving piece, as is this case. Um, I like to use the stronger adhesive here. Even border all the way around. And then there's a punched up version, right? With our 3D embossing folder, the Merry Melody serving as our base and our gift card pocket here. And now we have our second design. All right, let's take a look at our third one. Our third kit will include will include the red cardstock needed for the base and the accordion. It will include designer series paper. Uh, the designs of this might vary uh, for my um, original sample. Um, I used the pattern of the One Horse Open Sleigh that includes the cabin with the bridge. Um, for the one that we're going to do now, I'm using the fence pattern, but there are multiple patterns in the One Horse Open Sleigh designer series paper pack, um, which are available in the online exclusive section of the store that will easily adapt um, and make beautiful cards uh, for this gift card holder. And it'll also give you the white card stock needed for this design. Uh, it'll also come with a strip of ribbon in order to tie the bow. I've already pre-tied a bow for the purposes of making our card today because bows for me are a little hard and fussy and I'm just not good at it. I'll just be honest. So. Um, we're going to make our sample card here. So let's get started <clears throat> with our truck. So like our last card design, our truck is punched out in this one. So I'm going to put it close to the edge to make punching it out easy. You probably noticed that for this series of cards, I used the tree in the back of the truck. Um, there are other images that you could use uh, in the stamp set. You could use packages or, you know, you could easily adapt this to be, oh, I almost did it again. Let me stamp those tires really quickly. Um, you could have the packages be Christmas packages. They could be birthday. I mean, they're all kinds of images that you can put in the back of the truck, just based on the occasion that you are making your gift card holder for. So punch our truck out here. I'm going to set it aside for a moment. So I'm going to do my tree. And just like the last time, I'm going to leave, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so on the bottom underneath my tree image so that I will have a way to adhere it to the back of my truck image here. Uh, 
<clears throat> and you notice I did not get this one perfectly squared up, but this tree looks like it has snow on it. So sometimes imperfection is A-OK, -okay, and it's perfect also. Just depends on what you're going for. We're gonna run with it here. All right, do a little bit of fussy cutting to get my tree. Again, you can be as precise or imprecise as the case may be um, with your fussy cutting. Um, just depends on what shape you want to end up with, you know, being visible on the sides, you know, the way it pops out against the background. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape on the back of my truck, right underneath that back bed. I'm gonna remove the backing there. Put my tree, I'm gonna pull it forward. This time, I'm gonna go ahead and put my dimensionals on the back. Now, while I don't have anything else on the table in my way. I'm gonna set my truck aside over there. All right, with my scrap of paper here, I'm going to go ahead on my straight edge side because it's one fewer cut that I need to make here in a little bit. I'm going to stamp my sentiment and I'm going to put it close to this left edge as well. Again, a, a, some fewer cuts that I have to make. I'm gonna grab my cutter here And cut it out. And I'm going to set it aside. You can decide how much a border you want to leave on that. Um, I just wanted to be sure that I have enough in the corner that when I tie my bow, I can affix it up there. So I'm gonna set that to the side as well. So now I'm going to pull out my other um, pieces here and start putting it all together. So I'm going to put some uh, adhesive on the back of this. I chose the red hatched pattern of the One Horse Open Sleigh. Um, designer series paper as my backdrop here. I left approximately a uh, oh an eighth of an inch around. That might be as much. Yeah, might be as much as a quarter. Um, all the way around my sheet here. Nice little border as you can see. <clears throat> there are lots of patterns to choose from in that one horse open sleigh pack, or you might have a, a different. Um, pack of paper that you'd like to use as your background. Um, so for my front panel, I wanted something that it looked like my truck was driving on a road, you know, going to grandma's house. So in my original sample, I used the cabin with the bridge. In this one, I'm using the tree line with the snow and the fence, just to show you that there's lots of versatility in the designer series papers that we have available. So I'm going to eyeball where I want that truck because I am gonna add one little detail on this paper. I'm gonna give myself a little road down there using my pattern here to 
like that. Just so I've got that little visual detail down there. Gives us a road, right? There we go. I'm gonna take the backing off of my dimensionals on my truck and I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to my di designer series paper. Like so. I'm going to take my sentiment, decide where I want it. It needs some dimensionals on the back. I'm gonna take three of those. And I'm going to add a bow on the top of my dimensional. I think I would like this pretty close to the top. Yeah. Um, I am not the greatest at tying bows, so I went ahead and tied one ahead of time. Um, you'll have a length of ribbon about six inches long. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just bumped my thing here because I did not have my picker tool out. Um, I'm going to use a glue dot to adhere my ribbon here. I'm going to put it on the corner of my sentiment, like so. All right. I'm going to take my uh, adjoining piece of designer series paper because I can I wanted the pattern to continue the scene to continue to the gift card pocket um, I'm gonna cut my notch out of the top again about I don't know three quarters of an inch down or so add my tear and tape to the back Give it a good, solid stick to the base there. So it won't go anywhere as people are taking gift cards in and out. Remove my backing, maybe. <laughs> Equal border all the way around. Now I've got my gift card pocket here. Run my finger over where that adhesive is to be sure it gets a nice, good, solid bond. I'm going to take my <clears throat> panel here. Oh shoot, that's not the right size. Cut it down really quickly. Some adhesive on the back. Ah. Oh, got something on that. All right. Now we're going to put our accordion on our base here using our tear and tape for a good solid bond pull the backing off Here it to our base. And there we have it. 
gives you an idea of how you can use all of the designs in the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper pack along with the Trucking Along bundle to build these cute scenes. So let's take one more look at all three of our designs from today. So we have our first design that was stamping only with our trucking along set. We have our second design, which included the Merry Melody embossing folder, as well as the entire trucking along bundle stamps and punch. And then we have our third design, which includes the trucking along bundle, as well as the one horse open sleigh designer series paper. Several of the patterns in that. So again, if you are interested in receiving the kit for this week's projects, as well as the detailed instructions, simply place an order in my online store using this week's host code. The link is in the comments to go directly to the store, and that includes the host code. It needs to be an order of at least $40 before tax and shipping in order to get the kit for these designs for free. That will make two of each of the gift card designs for this week's projects. If you place an order that happens to equal $150 or greater, please, when you check out, remove the host code because you are going to get free product from Stampin' Up! and you will still qualify to receive the kits and instructions for this week's projects. So again, to get this week's projects, an order of $40 in the online store before tax and shipping using this week's host code. The host code will be open until 11.59 p.m. Central Time on Monday, November the 20th. So you can click on the link in the comments that will take you directly to the store, and that should also auto-populate the host code during the checkout process. But be sure your host code is there. That lets me know that you are interested in receiving this week's kit. So, I hope that you have enjoyed this first episode. I look forward to seeing you next week for more projects. See you next time.